Hi there, welcome to my channel. I use data to explore the world and to know more about people. Data can talk and the devil is in the details if we look closely and with curiosity. What story the data will tell us today? Let's find out. Today's story starts from this chart, rice production volumes in Ukraine from 1960 till now. Some background information before we start. Milled rice is the white rice we usually eat. After the harvest, the rice house removed from the grain, which become brown rice. When the outer layer of brown rice polished, we have milled rice. Rice is the primary staple food for more than half of the world population, mostly in Asia, Sub-Saharan Africa, and South America. China and India are the top two producers, accounting for more than half of the global output. India is the biggest rice exporter. Let's get back to the chart. Ukraine is known as Europe's breadbasket, a major wheat and sunflower oil producer and exporter. In the rice field, Ukraine is a small player. The rice grown in Ukraine is only for local consumption. You might have also noticed that the rice volume dropped more than 50% in 2014 and onwards. It looks really unusual. What was going on there? Are there anything to do with Crimea? According to USDA report in 2009, rice is grown in three southern regions of Ukraine. One is in Crimea, and its production is more than half of the Ukrainian rice output. When I dig deeper, it turned out there's no rice plantation in Crimea since 2014 till 2022. What happened in Crimea in almost eight years without growing any rice? The answer is water. Rice is water-intensive crop. Without water, it's almost impossible to grow rice. Although Crimea is surrounded by water but lacks fresh water, the agriculture mostly depends on irrigation. For years, Crimea received 85% of its water from Ukraine's Dnipro River, well, the North Crimea Canal. 15-20% to water from the canal used for drinking, and the rest went to the rice fields and the fisheries. The North Crimean Canal, with a 402 km main channel, was built during Soviet time in the 1960s. Crimea was used to be arid steppe. The diverted water from Dnipro River turned Crimea into a land of agriculture and the land of rice growing. All that changed after Russia occupied Crimea in 2014. This morning, more unidentified pro-Russia armed militias patrolling the streets of Crimea's capital. For ourselves, this column of armored personnel carriers roaming the roads here in Ukraine's Crimea, where most people are Russian. It has fueled civilian unrest across eastern Ukraine. Ukraine blocked the waterway with bags of sand and clay as a form of protest against the occupation. Later, Ukrainian authority built another dam close to Russian-controlled territory to shut off the water supply. Instead of flowing to Crimea, the water in the canal was used to irrigate the melon fields and peach orchard of Ukraine's Kherson region. According to 2017 Human Rights Report, the situation had no negative implication on drinking water. Agricultural lands were affected, and practically all rice plantations on the peninsula perished. However, in 2018, Crimea was hit by severe drought due to lack of rain, followed by low snowfall in the winter, plus years of underinvestment in pipes and drilling. Crimea had been facing severe water shortage. In the capital Simferopol and elsewhere, water has been rationed since 2020. Moscow was transporting water from mainland Russia over Kerch Bridge for locals to take away in plastic containers. It became a critical issue for the Kremlin. Moscow launched a 40 billion rubles program trying to solve the Crimea water crisis including drilling wells, repairing pipes, and adding storage and desalination capacity. Things changed again in February 2022. 
Three days after Russian forces invaded Ukraine, Russian military forces destroyed the dam and restored water supply to Crimean Peninsula. At the same time, in Mariupol, a city in southeastern Ukraine, Russian soldiers shut off local water supply as part of a brutal siege on the city, leaving the trapped population without access to safe drinking water or sanitation. For much of human history, water was a standard weapon of war. In the post-Second World War period, however, nation-states in international conflict have made concerted efforts to restrain the weaponization of water. Attacks on civil water infrastructure violate international conventions, but the tactic has become increasingly common over the past decades, particularly in the Middle East, and the trend seems to continue on the rise. A simple chart brought up a heavy topic about the role that water plays in the ongoing war between Russia and Ukraine.